Hi students, hope you are all doing well. Today I start lecture 20 in our course and today I am going to discuss the similarity parameters which are essentially Reynolds number and Mach number and these two numbers play a very important role in internal testing in determining the various forces which act on typical aircraft and flight vehicles and so these are very important numbers which we need to understand further. I am Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now before we go into dynamic similarity, let's discuss something known as geometric similarity with which many of you are intuitively familiar. For example, if I have a model or an actual aircraft, its wing could be something like this. So the dimensions are typically very large. They could be in four meters, six meters and so on. But when I try to do a scaled model in a wind tunnel, this is going to be much smaller because the wind tunnel typically has a location which is much smaller for keeping the test section. So it could be something like this. So here you can see this is a one-tenth scale model. So four has been divided by 10, it's become 0.4. Six meter has been divided by 10, it's become 0.6. And similarly, 0.1 meter here, the thickness of the airfoil at the maximum thickness location has become 0 0.01 meter. So this is something which is known as a geometrically similar model. So we can properly define it by saying that two bodies are geometrically similar if the body dimensions in the x, y and z coordinates have the same linear ratio. So we see that here the linear ratio is the same and as far as any angles are concerned which is the orientation of the body, this should remain same. So here it was 10 degrees and here this also remains 10 degrees. So this is a concept which is of course very important and very familiar to many of us that if you are going to develop a model of something, we should make it geometrically similar and this you see even in small toys which are often made, good quality models of cars, for example, even things such as Hot Wheels and so on try to remain as geometrically similar as possible. Now next we turn to the topic of the day which is dynamic similarity and like I mentioned before the Mach number and the Reynolds number are the dynamic similarity parameters. Mach number recall was defined as velocity of the body divided by the speed of sound and Reynolds number is density into velocity into length divided by the viscosity and here of course we are assuming we are flying in air so the air properties will apply here in terms of the density the viscosity and also the speed of sound now if you were in a different planet of course you would have to use different numbers here now typically as far as L is concerned this is the characteristic length of the particular body you are dealing with so if it was a cylinder or a sphere you would probably consider the diameter but as far as aircraft are concerned, we typically look at the mean chord length as the characteristic length of the aircraft. So generally the chord length varies, but we can calculate a mean aerodynamic chord length and use that number. Now let us look at the Reynolds number in more detail because there is an interesting physical interpretation here. So if we write the Reynolds number out, it's rho v l by mu. And what I do is I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by VL. So I have put those on in blue here. Now, if I look at this carefully, the top term is the inertial force and the bottom term is the viscous force. So we can look at it in terms of dimensions and see, for example, if I look at the numerator term, I would have this as density into length square which is meter square into velocity square which is meter square per second square and then when I do some cancellations here so the meter cube cancels with the meter 4 I get kg meter per second square and so this is same as Newton so remember Newton would be the mass into acceleration that is the force now if I do this same experiment with the denominator I again see that I have velocity meter per second length meter 
mu is kg per meter second this is the unit of viscosity and then when i again simplify this i get some cancellations here and then i get kg meter per second square which is again newton so essentially what we have done by multiplying by this vl is that we have converted the top and bottom the numerator and denominator into force dimensions and we see that the top part is the inertial part and the bottom part is the viscous part so this tells us that if the Reynolds number is very high then the inertial force will be much greater than the viscous force so essentially if the viscous forces are very small very negligible for example if you are in relatively large aircraft which are flying very rapidly then the Reynolds number is typically in the millions however if you were to consider something very small such as a fruit fly or a mosquito or an aircraft of that size for example a micro air vehicle then what would happen is that the velocity would be less the length would be less and also the viscous forces would tend to dominate that kind of flow so Reynolds number would be much smaller in that kind of flow so essentially Reynolds number is an important parameter it tells us how important viscous effects are and so high Reynolds number typically say that viscous effects are less important so again let's turn back to dynamic similarity and like I mentioned before dynamic similarity comes from Mach number and Reynolds number and dynamically similar flows have the same Mach number and Reynolds number and this is something which is important for wind tunnel testing and the reason is because if the Mach and Reynolds number are the same for the model airplane as the real airplane in flight then CL, CD, CM measured in the wind tunnel will be the same as these values in flight. So this is something which is very important. There is a possibility of measuring these type of values in wind tunnels if we are able to create a situation where the Mach number and the Reynolds number are the same. So here I have tried to show this pictorially in a conceptual manner. For example, let's say an airplane is flying and this airplane typically flies at something like Mach number 0.1 and Reynolds number of 1 million. Now, if I were to do an experiment in the wind tunnel to calculate various aerodynamic forces and moment which act on this airplane, I would essentially have to get a model such that M would be 0.1 and Reynolds number would be 1 million. Now, of course, when I do this kind of scaling, do think that L is going to be much lower because the length here, the characteristic length in the full scale regime is much larger than here. So maybe it could be one tenth, it could be one fifth or something like that. Now, what would happen is that the wind tunnel would also have a different velocity. Probably it would have different density depending on the location it is in and it would have slightly different viscosity also because those are air properties so if you are clever enough or lucky enough you would be able to match the Mach number and Reynolds number in these two regimes and then you would have dynamic similarity in an ideal situation now the problem is that that is something which is very difficult to do because there is an explicit relation between the Reynolds number and Mach number so let's look at that if we write out the Mach number as V by A we can write V is MA similarly if I write the Reynolds number as rho VL by mu I can write velocity as Reynolds number into mu by rho into L so having these two velocity equations I can equate these two and therefore I can get this term here MA equals Reynolds number into mu divided by rho into L and so if I take Reynolds number on one side I then end up getting Reynolds number equal to A into rho into L by mu into M. Now you'll see that rho and mu are essentially constants coming from air because these are related to density of air and viscosity of air a is the speed of sound so of course you remember the formula there it's a uh, root gamma rt gamma is a property of air r is a property of air and so it's dependent on temperature basically 
So if we consider standard sea level and we put L equals to one meter in this equation, we can actually get a relationship between Reynolds number and Mach number. And this would be a relationship which applies per meter of reference length because I have considered one meter length here. So there is a relationship between these two quantities. And so it's sometimes very difficult to match the Reynolds number and Mach number both at the same time. So dynamic similarity is hard to obtain in practical life because it's difficult to match the Mach number and Reynolds number between the full scale and the wind tunnel model. So what can you do? You can actually play around with some of the different parameters here. For example, you could have pressurized wind tunnels, high altitude tunnels, and so on. So many of these play around with the rho here. So that is the density. So essentially, you could use different gases also. For example, Freon or R134A. You could use a water tunnel. These are all essentially plays in density and viscosity and so on. Now you could play around with the size of the wind tunnel. So that may help you to use a much larger model, for example. So if your wind tunnel itself is of considerable size, you could probably use a one fifth scale model instead of a one twentieth scale model. So that would be advantageous in some cases. Also, you could play around with the velocity of air in the wind tunnel to some extent, and that would let you change some of these parameters. But do remember that it's very hard to play around with all these parameters all the time. And sometimes you may actually just need to have a different wind tunnel to do this. So we see that matching Reynolds number and Mach number is key to getting good results from wind tunnel because these are the similarity parameters and they are going to play a big role in getting the flow forces to be the same. Sometimes you need to just find the right wind tunnel for a given model. So you will see sometimes there is a lot of demand for particular wind tunnels which have large size, which may have a location, which is at a certain density and so on. So we can say that wind tunnels are often a national and international resource. And I know of situations where people have actually flown a model across continents to do testing because they were able to get the right wind tunnel there. So you may have to book time in that wind tunnel. You may have to pay a lot of money. And what you want to do is then go there, create a situation of dynamic similarity, and then do your experiments. Now, in the last 10, 15 years or so, Computational fluid dynamic has also entered as a competition for, for wind tunnels because you can do numerical experiments, which are essentially you can simulate this kind of situation. You may not need to do wind tunnel testing then. You can actually simulate everything by solving partial differential equations in a very exact manner. But again, there are various certification issues involved. And at the end of the day, the people who do certification, who actually certify whether the airplanes are able to fly or not will require some kind of internal testing because they want to be very sure because in aerospace what happens is that a lot of safety issues are always involved people will die if there is a crash and therefore people are very conservative so certification people tend to be very conservative and therefore they do not want to take any risk they wait a long time before the technologies which are coming up based on numerical methods and computational methods mature sufficiently before they actually use it. Because remember, as far as aerospace is concerned, uh, there is nothing like a beta version here. You cannot bring out an app and then say, sorry, I'm bringing out certain changes and this is a new app and so on. If your plane crashes, then it's going to be very bad and there are going to be very deleterious consequences for you and your company. So I'll end this video here. I hope you benefited from it and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.